two, three. But it's not all bad. Battery replacement aside, your maintenance costs will be significantly lower because we've got very few moving parts. Your brakes will last three to four times longer simply because we're using them that much less because of the region braking. Now, this doesn't mean dealers won't try to rip you off. Sometimes it's just in their blood. They presume you are clueless, but you are not. Nevertheless, stay alert. Now certainly the biggest pro of electric cars are zero tailpipe emissions. That means no fumes damaging your lungs, your skin. Have you ever lived in a big congested city? This whole idea, hustle and bustle of a sexy city is a bit of a fantasy because the reality is far more tragic. It is loud, sticky, full of smoke. Now imagine if all vehicles, cars, buses were electric. It would be a whole different world. Quieter, cleaner for the body and mind. And truth be told, you're not exactly hearing glorious engines under your window if you're living in the city. Or oh, here's an idea. Ban all the shitty engines and leave Maserati Quattro Porte, Giulia Quadrifoglio alone. Because why? because they add value. It's simple as that. Tell me how to be closer to ya. Tell me how and I'll do it, babe. Cause I just wanna make you feel what do about ya. So just tell me how and I'll do it, babe. And why do I emphasize zero tailpipe emissions? Well, that's because electric cars are not emissions free. They are not zero emissions. And those who claim EVs are green and perfect, well, you know, this is a big, disgusting, fat lie. And why? Well, first of all, electricity does not fall off the sky. In very few countries, energy is completely renewable. In most, coal is still being burnt to produce electricity. Second issue we've got with natural resources to produce the batteries. I'm not even going to talk about recycling of these batteries. Lithium, graphite, to name a few. These are natural resources, which means the supply is limited. When will it end? Well, that is a trillion dollar question. So you see, no smoke in congested cities sounds amazing in theory, because in reality, you are effectively transferring the problem somewhere else. So are electric cars more sustainable and cheaper to run than combustion engine cars? Well, it depends on how you drive, where you drive, and how do you charge it. There are also other important factors coming into play. And hearing all this, might make you more confused. Is an EV the right car for you? Well, a pretty good place to start will be to ask yourself these three simple questions to recognize your needs. Number one, do you drive less than 100 kilometers, 60 miles a day? Occasional long distancing is fine. Number two, do you drive mainly around town versus motorway? And number three, can you install a charger at your home or work? Now, bear in mind, jobs, locations do change. So you do need a solid backup in the form of a public charger and a solid dose of patience. Now, if you've answered yes to these three questions, an EV can potentially be a great choice for you. Now, many people will argue about this, but as a woman to another woman, my advice on EVs is very straightforward. It's black and white. If you can have a charger at home, that's very good. Clean, convenient, go for it. But if you cannot, 
I just don't recommend EVs at all. And the answer is, well, very simple, safety. Unless you live in a safe country such as Switzerland or Monaco, to name a very few. I just don't think it's a good idea. Charging when it's dark, a lot of public chargers don't have good lighting, no sense of safety or security. Imagine you're sitting in your car and a creep creeps up to you. I mean, what do you do? You can't just drive off with a cable and a charger. It only happens in the movies. And sure, you can argue you can't do that at a petrol station, just that charging still takes a lot longer. I mean, you have to leave your car, scan your card or stop the app, unplug and get back in. Oh, hi, stranger. It's funny until it isn't. Remember when you told me you believe in something and you say you're done pretending that fate is patient. So what are my thoughts on EVs? It's a great product for some because when ill fits it to your needs and lifestyle, it leads to nothing but misery and regret because it's unforgiving. And I think many EV fanatics do more bad than good because no darling, one size does not fit all. As of today, we've got petrol, diesel, hybrid, EVs, synthetic fuels, hopefully in not too distant future. It's a whole landscape different horses for different courses. EVs are a great addition, but they're certainly not a replacement. And the political element in EVs, well, it is rather laughable, a bit sad and completely unnecessary. I mean, can you remember a politician which has innovated the world? Hmm. I can't. I mean, for goodness sake, Kanye West wanted to run for a president. I mean, strangely enough, we don't have Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk running to be a president. My thoughts precise. Summer's end, and you feel that this is your beginning. And as for me, well, I have spent a fair amount of time and frustration traveling with EVs across Europe. Nevertheless, sometimes I enjoy EVs. My favorite by far has been Audi RS e-tron GT, but that's an extraordinary car. So for me, it has to be super fast, super sexy, and all very premium, like this Genesis G80. I find ordinary EVs rather boring. Come on, I'm a petrol head. You gotta give me some meat on the bones. I also enjoy teasing my luck seeing how far I can push this. So last week I have arrived at home with absolutely 0% battery. I saw a turtle icon, turtling, aren't we? I'm a bit hardcore, but I enjoy it though. So come to think of it, EVs have been actually quite forgiving to me, for now. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful. I'm just a human, so if I have made any mistakes, let me know. Be nice, don't be nasty. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!